Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and look at the key terms. And again, keep in mind on those key terms, especially when it comes to those crossword puzzles. Those key terms can come in very handy. Now you also have key concepts. I'm not going to read them until you can read them yourself. And the objectives. Please try to use this page. I included it in your packet and here uh, for a reason. This is a good summary page of what it is that you're what it is that you're supposed to get out of this section of the text of the workbook. So make sure you're you're taking advantage of reading these and trying to understand so you're reading for reading with intent, you're reading for understanding, and you have some idea of what you're looking at. <clears throat> So here's some examples of fossils that we have found through different in different places around the world, uh, and they're actually fairly clearly they were made by living creatures. In the instance, this is I think to everyone obvious that it's a, a branch of some kind of plant, a vascular plant at that, with leaves and stems. Here is. Uh, what I think again is pretty obvious uh, a shell of a a shell of a uh, a shell of a conch right here is a shark's tooth again I, I think to me it's fairly obvious here's a, a some ants actually stuck in amber sort of like that that movie Jurassic Park um, this is a, a tree, a tree ring. It's stone now. It's not. It's not made of of wood anymore. And here's something called a mold, right? Where you have uh, these layers uh, from a, a lamp shell, a, a brachiopod. And imprinted into this, into this stone, and obviously here you have wing bones of some type of bird. This was in the tar pit. There's four different, five different places you can you you know that we often find fossils where you have silicon, you know, silica, <coughs> sand, right? So you can sand can be made into almost a glass. That volcanic ash can can be incorporated. That silica, that sand, can be incorporated into the into wood and form stone that can last eons, right? Phosphatization is where phosphorus deposits, right? They sink into the bones and the and the teeth, and they be, that phosphorus becomes stone because that's what phosphate phosphate does is it becomes stone. Pyritization is pyrite. The iron pyrite, the fool's gold. Uh, tar pits. The tar pits themselves have very little oxygen to preserve the bones really well. So you can see that this the tar pit, the tar just surrounds it and engulfs it. Uh, trapper, uh, trapped in amber. Obviously, this is amber. So it, uh, amber is something that uh, trees release, right? And, and then it hardens and almost uh, very much like a like, a, well, it's a resin. Again, very little oxygen, so it can last the maximum amount of time. Still, amber would be, none of these, none of these methods would preserve DNA over millions of years. So that's one of our problems when we're trying to get DNA evidence from dinosaurs, the, uh, the non-avian dinosaurs. Uh, if they're not birds, then they're too old for us to get dinosaur uh, DNA from. Calcium carbonate and remains of marine plankton deposited in sediments and sea creatures, right? So remember, calcium carbonate is chalk, right? Is the material that chalk's made of. There. Then this can, uh, this can uh, form around the sediments where the bottom of oceans, et cetera. So in almost every case, it takes 
uh, it takes some event to occur for the material to become fossilized. Obviously, it has to be buried very quickly. Otherwise, it would rot. Uh, it would have to be buried... Uh, it had to be buried uh, under the right conditions. Uh, it probably has to be something hard. Uh, you know, you might say a stem, a plant stem isn't that hard. But this is an imprint fossil, so it fell down and something else laid down on top of it and left the imprint in the mud, right? But again, and the conditions had to be right. It couldn't keep raining because then the mud would just wash away. So it had to dry fairly quickly and keep drying and then get buried again. So you can see how rare these fossils are. There must have been a lot of life, a lot of examples for this to happen to this many because we do find them. We say I say rare. I mean rare as far as in proportion to the amount, number of living organisms at the time. But they're common enough that you could go into any area and find some type of fossil. I found my first fossil when I was a kid in my own backyard. So you can find these you can find these fossils in different places. Uh, shark's teeth are even sold at museums. They're so common. Uh, and obviously with shark's teeth, those are fairly common because sharks, they don't have to die to, to preserve the teeth. Sharks are made of cartilage except for their, uh, for their teeth, and their teeth are replaced continuously. And as they replace them, the old teeth fall out of their mouths and fall to the bottom of the ocean. So there's many, many, many shark, shark teeth fossils found all the time uh, as they've been buried over the ages. Uh, we, they fossilized, and we find those shark tooth fossils all the time. Remembering that this is no longer bone. None of these are what they used to be. This is no longer wood. Uh, the ants still have DNA. They're still what they were. They're trapped in amber. They're not actually, don't have themselves replaced. Uh, but for the most part, when you're looking at fossils like these, where you've taken and put phosphate, replaced the bone with phosphate, or you replace the wood with silica, these these fossils are no longer bone, right? Uh, this is the only the outermost shell is still the original material. Uh, so most of these have been replaced by uh, by some kind of stone material over time through chemical reactions, osmosis and diffusion. Those are the things that, that drive the creation of fossils, and they take a lot of time. All right. You know what a reptile looks like, a lizard or an alligator, and you know what a bird looks like, an avian. Well, there are features that this dinosaur had, or, yeah, this creature had both reptilian and avian features because it was a transitional fossil. It was a fossil at the very beginning of the change from land-walking dinosaur to bird. I had a mixture of both traits, so let's take a look at it. This is the fossil that we found. It's found there many of them have been found many of them have been found in China. Uh, they have four limbs. Uh, if they were uh, like a reptile, they have four limbs, they have three functional fingers with grasping claws. The vertebra are almost flat faced. That would be more of a avian or bird feature. The lax reductions and fusions present in other in other birds, right? So it doesn't have the the fusion that would have occurred in birds. You know, in birds you have an, a wing. This fusion didn't occur here, and so you have this this bending, this wrist, if you will. Where in a bird you wouldn't have the wrist in the wing. The breastbone is small and lacks a keel. So here's the breastbone of the creature. Now why is its neck in this position? Well, it got smashed, so it died, and it was buried. So it's not going to look exactly like it's not in a position of, it's not in a frozen in time, in a position that it would normally be. It got smashed. So the breastbone is small and lacks a keel. 
uh, impressions of feathers attached to the forelimb. So to the forelimb, there are feathers. That's not something you would see in a reptile. Uh, true teeth set in sockets in the jaws. They actually have teeth, where birds obviously don't have teeth. Belly ribs, which don't, uh, which don't exist in reptiles. Limb, hind limbs girdle in typical uh, of a dinosaur, although modified. So the girdle here, the 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 almost the hip-like part of the hindquarters is very much like a reptile. Incomplete fusion of lower leg bones, right? So that's something you would find in a in a bird. Long bony tail is not something you would find in a bird. Birds have feathers, tail feathers. Uh, reptiles have long, bony tails. Impressions of feathers attached to the tail. Again, reptiles would not have feathers. So this creature was somewhere in between a reptile and a bird. Explain how each of the following preservation processes can result in fossil formation. Each of these you can see on the previous page. What natural process must arrest be arrested in order for fossilization to take place. Hopefully you can, you know, uh, you can say decomposition pretty easily. It has to be arrested, uh, you know, oxidation. You have to have, well, there has to be a lack of oxygen, right? Why are transitional fossils important understanding evolutionary change? Well, I hope that that makes sense, that it's, that by finding this, you have physical evidence uh, that supports the DNA evidence and the link between birds and, and reptiles and the dinosaurs, you can look at the structures that link, you know, for years people have looked at birds and said, oh, they look like they, they're similar to reptiles, but they maybe they're different. But we can see in this fossil that there's similarities and the differences, and we can see the change that occurred from when they went from dinosaur, which are more reptilian-like. Remember, dinosaurs are not reptiles, but they're like more like reptiles than they are like humans, for instance. And when we look at the, the connection between birds and dinosaurs, when we know dinosaurs today, we know dinosaurs are, or birds are dinosaurs. When we look at the this transition fossil, this, this change, this in-between organism, we can see that this, the changes, the, the mutations that had to happen, that had to accrue over time to create the things that we call birds today. These transition fossils help us, one, solidify our understanding, two, they verify any or contradict anything we were thinking of before of what the connection was between its ancestor and the present form that we see today. And three, it helps us understand how all these different creatures were related to one another. 